I'm just going to talk here for a bit about legalism and doing things uh, by grace. So grace can be like a very triggering word for people. A lot of times the word grace triggers um, the, the, the thought that people can do whatever they want without repercussions. And that when they learn that they can do whatever they want, they're going to do bad things. So again, it's our belief in people in general that people are bad. And that without the constraints of legalism and the law, that they will fly off the handle and that they will do all bad things. Because they feel like they can get away with it. But biblically speaking, grace is supposed to do the opposite. Grace lifts off legalism. And under grace, the idea is people accomplish more than they would have under the good that they're forced to do under the law. So the law forces people to do the good, whatever the good a person perceives. And I think the idea and the paradigm of law and grace can transfer over into any many different areas. It's not just about like thinking about church, just in life in general. So law is a lot of times like about um, constraint force, forced action, time. Uh, some, many times and most times driven by fear. Um, to do this good and to, in, in this time frame right here. And then, so yeah, the person may be grudgingly do this thing, whatever this thing is, whatever, you know, could apply to like anything. <clears throat> but they'll do it. They'll do it because they're forced to. And um, because they have to. But it's only a small portion of their life, right? So because they're forced to do this legally or... I'm not even talking about the laws in our world per se. It's just like spiritual concepts, re concepts really. So because they feel forced to do this thing at this time, they will not end up doing more than that. So, in fact, the idea of grace, and, and then not only on top of that, but biblically speaking, the law or being legalistic induces sin, whatever that means, right? Whatever sin means. Some people think that sin means bad behaviors. Some say that sin means living um, with the idea that you're separate from God. You're living apart from God. And you're doing things to please God and to perform and to gain God's acceptance. That is sin. Um, grace, on the other hand, is knowing that you are one with God. And flowing from your union with God is what grace is about. And supposedly, you know, like the idea is with grace or with total freedom, which freedom is scary for many. With total freedom, people will run rampant. With total freedom in love. They'll do bad things because we believe people are bad. So that's the idea we have about people. People need to be constrained all the time or else they won't do the right things. The right things, right? Who determines who's the right thing? what the right things are? We do. Society does. We determine what those right things are. And that people will not willingly do right things without being forced to. So, but contrarily, grace is... Um, where the idea of exceeding abundance happens, you know, what the law could do, grace magnifies in 10 times or 100 times that shit. So just as a little tiny example, somebody's forced to give 10% under law, right? Whatever. They give their 10%. But say they're free. Now they're free. They're like, no, the law is canceled. The law has been fulfilled. You don't have to give that 10% anymore. Well, the idea is that people are going to be stingy. They're not going to give anything. Hey, sure. Maybe for a time, people will be stingy because they've been forced for so fucking long that they're like, fuck this giving shit. I ain't giving, I'm keeping everything to myself, right? Because I can, under grace, I can. But after that rebound, after the initial rebound um, or rebellion, hi, yeah, I got interrupted, my bad. So yeah, after that initial rebellion, against what legal what you felt like legalism was forcing you to do in order to be like a good person or whatever you know you get past that 
uh, and then you enter kind of into grace where like you do things exceedingly abundantly like you find yourself wanting to give give more even than you gave the, that was then was required under grace you don't have to you know what I'm saying you don't have to again it's just the idea that people being completely free can accomplish more than they would than what they're uh <laughs> than being tied <coughs> to legalism so yeah that's the idea and i think that that's one of the underlying premises like uh, about hun hun excuse me unschooling too you know um with that freedom exceedingly more can be accomplished that's kind of i've kind of viewed you know unschooling you know versus public schooling or other or traditional homeschooling like in that light as well but like i said you can apply it to like to anything you know maybe when people are allowed to do things freely and willingly they can accomplish more you know but again, it's not with the intention, oh, let's put them under grace so that they accomplish more. You know what I'm saying? That's still like a legalistic intention. But there's a, there's a really big fear with allowing people to be completely fear free or whatever. Because like I said, if we allow people to be completely free in whatever way that means for you or anyone, then it means that they won't do anything. Or like same reference to like unschooling. Oh, if I let my kid do whatever they want, which it's not... The child is under your guidance all the time, right? That's the whole thing. You're so you're supporting them. You're there. You're involved. It's unschooling does not mean you leave your kid alone for the whole day to do whatever they want and they're by themselves. That's not what that means. Unschooling is supporting your child and being there in what they're doing and in their interests and being involved. Um, so yeah, some people think like, well, if I if I let my kid do whatever they want. They will just watch YouTube all day or be on their tablet. But will they? But will they? They might initially do that. They really might initially do that as a rebound to the legalism. But once they get past the fact that they've had their fill of YouTube all day, right? And even if they are watching YouTube all day, what are they learning? What are they interested in? Like, pay attention to that. But they, they probably will move past that. Because we're humans, like, we want to learn, we want to create. Like, your kids aren't, you know, it's kind of, like, instinctual to want to, like, do things, you know. Alright, that's all I wanted to share.